I'm bored. So I'm hanging out. Chilling. Ah, it has been a long week, folks. I don't know how many people are watching right now, but I uh, don't even feel like turning my camera on and getting all set up for like a proper stream. I just wanted to, I don't know, talk. It's been a long week. I know you guys probably, whoever's watching right now, probably watched my Beyond Magog on the main channel earlier in the week. And then I did like a quick cut of it because a lot of people didn't want to sit through a two hour stream. So I'm sure some people watched that, and it kind of it kind of summed up everything that's been going on. And um, well, uh, if you did watch the last stream, you know that things kind of fell through with the twelve and a half acres that I already owned. And for the past like year, I've been trying to get that land cleared and set up to build a studio on. But I had problems getting the an internet company to get me internet out there. I had problems with the county giving us an address. I had problems getting it perked so that we could put a septic tank down. So I just gave up on the 12 and a half acres and decided that I'm no longer gonna burden my family and burden Myself, with all the stress of trying to develop that 12 and a half acres into some place I can live. So, I've decided to look for a new property altogether and finance it myself and just make it easier, find myself a nice place to live. And after I announced that on the stream, and I also talked about a property that I found that I really wanted, well, I went and looked at it. And, um, yeah, that one's not going to work. Unfortunately, we be fucked on that one. Now, don't get me wrong. The 40 acres was really nice. But you can only tell a certain amount of things from pictures. When I got out there to meet the realtor and look at the place, it had a lot of problems, the actual house. There was an add-on. It was basically a manufactured home. And then the people before that lived there added on like a 570 square foot room. And I thought that would be perfect because that add-on room would make just a perfect studio. And then I could just live in the house. But when I got out there, who dog, that house turned out to be a money pit. It had foundation problems. It had, you know, like sinking parts in the ceiling where like water damage was. Um, it just had a lot of terrible things wrong with it that if I did purchase it, it would have just, I, I would have had to spend so much money to even just get the place fixed up. Uh, it wasn't, in my opinion, very livable. So it was one of those situations where the land was worth more than the house. And also because it was a semi-permanent foundation with a basically a manufactured home attached to it. And with the foundation problems and everything, it wouldn't pass any inspection, which means I probably wouldn't be able to line up the loan for the house. I could probably buy the land but I'm not spending $120,000 or $130,000 on a piece of property I can't move into. And then I called Suddenlink. I, call, I called every internet company that serviced that area, and not a single one of them offered internet in that area. So, you know, that was one of those that seemed a little too good to be true because they didn't... Of course, they're not going to list the problems with the place on the website. You know, they don't. You know, they they want people to look at it. If they, if they, if they had put all the problems with the fucking place on the Zillow website, I probably would have never gone out there. 
And so it is what it is. I wouldn't have been able to line up the financing. There was no internet. And the place was a rundown shithole that would have cost me fifteen, twenty thousand probably to fix and make it livable. And it's like, no, screw that. You know, it, it, it might have been worth buying if I could have got good high speed internet out there because I could have put up with living in a place like that for about a year or two. Even with it falling apart, I could have put up with it, saved up my money, took out a builder's loan, and built a different place while I was living in that one. And then I would have just tore that motherfucker down. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't have spent a single dime to fix that place up. It's really not worth it. it I would have just tore it down after I built something else. So just wasn't worth it. The land was great. Oh man, the land would have been perfect for building the village and the 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 studio building and you know if I was made of money, I could have done a lot with that 40 acres. I mean, fuck, that was a nice piece of property. And if you really think about the the price of land in this state, 130,000 for 40 acres is very reasonable. Because there's there's places in Arkansas where they want 130,000 for just like a two acre lot, just depends on where you're buying, and whether or not it's in the city or if it's out in the county and stuff. So, so after that, I decided to just make a big list of a bunch of other properties that I <clears throat> could potentially use. And um, spent the past two days driving out to them. I mean, it was, it's been a pretty crazy week. I've, I've spent a lot of time going to look at different properties all over the region of Arkansas that I wouldn't mind living, you know. But so far, nothing has really, nothing has really panned out. Uh, unfortunately, and uh, not yet anyway. I have a few more properties to go look at, uh, but uh, yep, that's, uh, that's what's been happening. Now, I've learned something this week that I'm not going to just be able to snap my fingers and the perfect property within my price range just becomes available, you know? So I've started to kind of re-determine what I need compared to what my big dream is and subtract some of the stepping stones between what I need and what my big dream is. And I've come to this decision. I can find a place that's very reasonable that has maybe a couple acres with it. And as long as it has good internet connection, I could buy that for a reasonable price live there, film a lot of the indoor stuff there, maybe even build a shop or a big studio building that I can build even bigger sets in and I can live stream from. And then later down the road, when I have more support and more money coming in, then I can either find another piece of property that's just land and I don't need internet out, out on that piece of property, and I could buy that and build the village on for outdoor shooting. Or I could build the village on the 12 and a half acres that I already own because that land isn't going to be good for me to live on because of all the problems I mentioned before at the beginning of the stream. But it is still good land, a lot of trees. We cleared that front like acre. It'd be pretty, it'd be perfectly fine to build a village on that and Ain't nobody going to mess with it back in there. It'd just be a village sitting on this piece of property, you know, a medieval village. So I've decided that maybe I should uh, 
maybe I should uh, just start looking for a place that has my number one priorities, which is internet, fast internet, not just you know, not just DSL, internet, and a little a land around it so I can have some privacy and have the option of expanding the business, as in. You know, I don't want to buy a city lot house that's in a suburb because I can't build a nice big shop and f uh, and use that as a studio. So, uh, Crazy Loon dropped a sign in the chat. Thanks, Crazy Loon. Hey, Magog, on the Gutfield show, they had a death metal guy who looked like something straight out of Morskar. You should check it out. Uh, I've never heard of Gutfield. But thanks. Anyway, that's my little update. Other than that, I just, I don't know, something came over me and I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like talking. So if anybody wants to join me on stream, they can tweet at me and I'll uh, look in my DMs. And uh, if you have a good connection, if you don't have a, you know, if you have a good microphone and you're not going to, you're not going to sound like shit. Um, people are welcome to come on and talk. I see Doc in the chat. Doc, if you want if you want a, a link, I could throw one at you, bro, if you're not doing anything. Um, um, so, you know, just uh, I'm just honestly just hanging out and wanting to talk about ideas and plans. Uh, I don't really this isn't this isn't some sort of just random stream so I can talk about politics and stuff. I I kind of want to talk about what's going on with my, you know, uh, oh, you know, with with what I plan to do with my channel and my show ideas and more scar and the building of this world and the characters and I kind of would like to keep the conversation on that tonight. Uh, personally, uh, we could always do another stream some other some other time. Um, Uh, Doc, you don't always sound like shit. Um, you go low and high every now and again because your auto volume is fucking with you. <laughs> Crazy Loon says, wish I could, but it's still got two hours work. Sorry to hear that, but at least I get to entertain you while you're at work. Um. No, what I meant by sounding like shit is like some people hop on the stream and they're like on their phone driving or they're out at a store and there's like music playing in the background and people yelling and wind sounds. And I don't really like that. Call me a stickler, but I just, I really don't like it. <laughs> but if somebody's bored and they want to hop on and talk about the world of Morskar and plans and things like that, I, you know. I'm meeting the realtor tomorrow to look at a property. I have an appointment at 11.30 to go look at a nice little place that's in my same, in my neck of the woods. It's not as far as some of the other properties I looked. It's not as far from where I'm already living. And uh, it's got internet. I already checked. Um, it's got good good strong sudden link internet out there because it's not far outside the city limits and i went driving out there today just to kind of look at the neighborhood because i couldn't get into the home i have to wait for the realtor to unlock it you know it's got one of those lock boxes on the front door you know that has the key inside of it but um i was able to at least drive by the property and have a look and there's some promise there it's it's only three and a half acres but there's some promise it's not a huge plot. It's th but three and a half acres is still three football fields, you know. Um, but I, I like to look at the neighborhood. I like to see what's around the property because I don't necessarily know if I want to live with neighbors that have, you know, dogs running around and like 17 kids in the front yard and shit like that, you know. I don't like to judge how other people live, but I'm just saying that doesn't mean I necessarily want to see it, <laughs> you know, like, ugh, you know, like, I, and I drove out there and there are some rednecky ass fucking places down that road, but I, 
not as bad as some of the others. You know, so yes, you're right, uh, Jim Adams. Rome was not built in a day. In fact, it was built in many, many lifetimes. Many, many lifetimes. But let me copy the link to the Hangouts and send it to some people who have messaged me. Um, eh, 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 eh. Hey, Stalvin's Forge. Yep. Like I said, guys, this is just kind of an idea stream. It's nothing serious. Like I said, I don't even have my camera. I don't feel like doing all that. But I did feel like talking. I just, you know, I mean, I'm in this business for a reason. I like talking. <laughs> I like talking to people. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a new property. That's pretty much the just of it, uh, to expand my operation, because if I don't expand, I'm going to die. Uh, this job is not going to be my job anymore if if I don't get some more room to expand and build bigger sets and do more interesting stuff. Hey, so, good evening. Howdy, Doc. How you doing? Just chilling, bro. Chilling, chilling, chilling like a villain, villain, villain. Yeah, I'm just recouping. We walked around the Air Force Museum all day today. So, yay! That's fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, now, okay, so what you're looking at? I mean, are the finances in 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 order for this to make it buoyant? Yeah, I can get a loan. That's not the problem. It's finding the right property. Like that one I went and looked at that had 40 acres. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't give me that loan because the land was worth more than the house. The house was basically a wrecked trailer with a with a redneck designed fucking like you know what they did? Because like that spare room that they built, that 570 square foot add-on. Yeah. They just poured the slab right on top of the grass. Oh, Jesus. And so when you walk in that room. You start to slide down back towards the back corner because the foundation's sinking. They didn't set the pad. They didn't put sand or gravel down first. They didn't put rebar in it. They just poured concrete on the grass. Oh, that's that, and that's built brilliant. a fucking room. <laughs> like you dumb rednecks. Now that you could set a marble on the ground and it would roll to the back right corner. Oh. Jeez, a piece. So, uh, so is your is your goal or your range just at the three, or is the one that you're looking at right now um, uh, the uh, the best property that you've seen so far? No, nope, there's been some better ones, but unfortunately, when I called on them, even though they're still listed, they have a contract. Somebody's already made a serious offer. Oh, okay, and so they stole them out from under me. <laughs> I was like. Hmm. But I, I've had assurances that from the realtor that, especially the one I went and looked at yesterday, she told me that if the buyers fall through, she will call me because I want that property. I want it. 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 Do you, <laughs> do you have or can you put that in place with the others? Because, uh, you know, I know options are what you're looking for. What do you mean put it in place with others? Well, other realtors, if they're saying that there's a contract, that doesn't necessarily mean that, that the purchase has been done. No, it means, it, no, what I asked her about that too. I was like, just because they made an offer doesn't mean anything. I can make an offer, right? And she goes, no, the seller already accepted the offer. Oh, okay. Well, then again, it all falls to them whether or not the finances come through too. Well, that, that and uh, the inspection is Monday. And she said, if the the current buyers are not happy with what the inspection shows. Like if there's a lot more work that needs to be done to it than they're willing to do, they might drop out. Okay. And if that's the case, I might have a chance at it, but I doubt it. It's a really nice place. Even though it's a bit older, it's already had a lot of work done. It probably would only need a little tender, loving care, and it'd be a perfectly fine place to live. So do you know any of the pitfalls with this three acre property? Nope. That's why I'm going out to see it tomorrow. The only things I can guess at, though, is it is a 20-year-old manufactured home. It's been remodeled, but it's 20 years old, Yeah, which means slew of problems could come, you know, yeah. in, the, in the short future. 
I smell plumbing better. issues. Well, I don't. Plumbing issues are never really that. I mean, very few people break their plumbing. Uh, <laughs> it's usually like what I'm worried about is if it's twenty year old trailer. I say trailer, but it's a manufactured home. It's it's on a nice skirt and everything. It doesn't have wheels on it like the old ones, but. If it's 20 years old and it's the original HVAC system, mm -hmm. I'm gonna need a like yeah that. yeah I'm gonna need a new AC and 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 heater and hot water heater probably now. HVAC stuff isn't terrible. Like from when I worked in it, we replaced a lot of like manufactured home ones. It's just usually flex stuck with a single like hard metal trunk. Right, aren't usually hard to repair or replace. It it can be pricey. Because most companies will push you to go with a better system, but for well, one of those guys, Calvin, uh, it, that's not the problem. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I don't. I'm not. I'm not worried about the duct work and stuff. What I'm no. worried, you know. But instantly, no matter what, if you got to replace an AC unit, that's a few grand. Oh, definitely. No matter what, it doesn't matter if it's a easy problem or not. It's it's still going to be thousands of dollars. You know. You're not wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not hating on you for, for, for thinking, you know, uh, the deeper problems. Good, good for you for having a mind to think about the deeper problems. But it doesn't really look like the type of place that has those problems. A lot of it is cosmetic. But if that AC goes out or that heater <laughs> goes out, that's going to be pricey. Yeah. Well, there's always Walmart fans. But what... Now, um, is 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 there? And pardon the pun. Is there something magical about that 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 three acre? Something that just like kind of really you want to sink your teeth into? Yeah, the price. <laughs> okay. Isn't, isn't the land that you've got already bigger than that? It is, but I can't live on the land I got already. Oh, uh, oh uh, yeah, like you said. Well, no you fucking know. internet out there. Yeah, it wouldn't perk, so I'd have to. I'd have to. I'd have to clear a lot more to find a spot on that 12 acres that'll perk. I don't yeah, know if you guys know what that means. Yeah, getting addressed there, like I heard in a previous stream. Sounds like a real fucking nightmare to get. Yeah, basically a perk test allows you, uh, they, they come out and they test your property. And if it perks, then you can put a septic tank in. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. If it doesn't perk because the ground is too... Like, if, if the ground is too... If it soaks it up. Basically. Yeah, yeah. basically you can't drop a septic in a swamp, you know? Yeah. So if they perk down uh, six inches and find, like, a water table, you can't perk there, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so... but, yeah. For obvious reasons, yeah. You'll, you'll uh, contaminate the supply, basically. Yeah. By the way, before we get too heavy into this, welcome to my... Uh, random stream guys, Doc, uh, Mr. Gurr, and Stalvin's Forged, my my Forge buddy, <laughs> my Forge buddy. Yeah, first time I've ever actually talked to you directly. I don't think that's uh, that's true. I could have sworn you hopped in a couple streams that I've been in in the past. Me? No, I haven't. No, no. Is, I'm a stream vir I'm a Magog stream virgin. Uh -huh. popped my cherry. Popped your cherry. <laughs> um, I do remember your content. You have that cool little like three D animated stuff. You kind of like it. Kind of reminds me of suit. Yeah. You know. Um, but don't uh, remind me of suit. <laughs> look, well, we won't go nowhere. I'm just talking st strictly about the content. Look, he he yeah, uses cool animation. Yeah. Yeah, he uses that. like a three D animation program thing. It's it's kind of cool. I'm just saying, Soup beat the shit out of me last night with uh, tweets. Well, he'll do that. He has the grossest fucking pictures saved on his computer. <laughs> um, in the chat, Mark Bevan says, too bad I'm heading for work. Sorry, Mark, but uh, glad you're listening, and thank you so much for the donation. Crazy Loon says, Magogonites will likely want to pilgrimage to the holy site of my medieval village, I guess. <laughs> You know, I think honestly, it 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 would be awesome if if you could turn that into a type of field of dreams. Yeah, yeah. If you build it, they will come. Well, I mean, you know they will. There's an obvious fan base for this, right? And and, and seriously, you know, 
at least a few people who are heavy in in the ren fair kind of stuff that you get the word out into that community and they will do pilgrimages yeah and even though youtube seems to be stifling your growth at the moment as soon as word gets out about it there is well, a lot of call for a more dark well Every sort of Ren Faire, but when you get a niche sort of thing where it's a little more darker and based on comedy, then people are going to, yeah, go nuts over it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I will grow a lot faster once I can start doing some more dynamic content that really catches people's eye. And the only way I can do that is get a new place so I can build more sets. Speaking of your place in the sets, how is the uh, groundwork looking like on that three acre? Oh yeah, yeah. You said you haven't seen it yet. Never mind. No, I drove out there. Okay. So yeah. is it all flat? Has it got some like? Oh yeah, it's all flat. I can actually pull it up if you want. Ah, that's up to you, boss. But the reason I'm drawn to it as a place to live is not only does there high speed internet available in the area, um, but it's only seventy nine thousand or seventy five thousand. That's pretty cheap. Mm. And that's pretty cheap. I can definitely afford that. I would sell mine to you, but you don't want to come up here. No, no, I really don't. Mostly because <laughs> it's gullies, man. You don't want that. I'm pretty dead set about staying in Arkansas because, um, I was just you know, I, as well. uh, one, I like being one of the very few YouTubers from Arkansas. Two, I like the natural landscape of Arkansas. There's a lot of trees, a lot of hills, a lot of mountains and stuff. There's a, a nice blend of different landscapes. And number three, all my friends and family are here. Just because I'm doing this thing doesn't mean I don't want to see my real life friends now and again. You know, that's true. You know, I got uh, you know I got kind of a social a social life outside the internet here. You know, well, of course. You know. Well. You guys, you guys got to give me that, you know? you know. I just, I just keep thinking back to uh, the the guy who opened up Full Moon Saloon uh, up there, and of course, you know the Big Black Hills, and he started off with like jack shit, and it was hard working, and he almost lost that bar more than once. Sure, but it's 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 perseverance. I mean. We're behind you. We'll promote you as much, as much as we can. But um, what the, it, what's the one special spark that's going to keep you going? Um, the size of my penis really gives me confidence. <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, it just get, it wakes me up in the morning, knowing that I have an impressive penis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> any problem? Yeah, nope. sure. That's not Poe just sitting on your lap. Yeah, no, it's more like a thimble wearing a clown's Just wig. I need to shave. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I'm, I'm never going to give up on this project, honestly. But there are times that I get kind of depressed about not being able to do anything, you know? Well, yeah, that's the worst thing in the world when you're you're feeling not not physically but mentally like your hands are fucking tied and you can't do anything about it. But yeah. it doesn't ever seem like that you're not moving forward or making the effort to move forward. It's not like you're treading water at this point. Absolutely. Well, yeah, my, uh, my, my fans love what I do and, uh, my, my content has been, I mean, my channel has been growing since I started the new content that's, you know, shorter form, but I can pump it out more regularly and it's trending topics. So I'm getting new subscribers and, you know, SideQuest is going wonderfully. I, I so thoroughly enjoy SideQuest. And, uh, and I'm trying to turn me and Beardy and Weibo and, and, and Angie over at Stuttering Soliloquy can, are really trying to make that show something special and fun. And, uh, and people seem to be really liking it. So I have successes to boast. But I also find myself getting into more creative slumps than I used to back when my first two years, I you know. I mean, I've been through a lot of shit in the two in the past two years that I've been doing this YouTube thing, and now I've gotten to the point where, you know, I'll pound out content for like a week straight, and everybody be like, "Hey, there's videos everywhere. We love Magog," and then all of a sudden there'll be like a three week nothing, because I just get into this creative slump where I can't write good jokes. I'm miserable. I'm just stuck in limbo in this tiny apartment with this tiny set. I can't do anything. 
like I'm I'm starting to write more dynamic comedy, but it requires Magog to like move around and like be outside in the woods on a quest, you know, and I can't do it. <laughs> I can't I fucking do it. I'm stuck in an apartment. I know the feeling with being in a small shop, so I completely hear your plight. You're not trying to rest on any laurels you have, and you're trying to progress. And I mean, anyone that's a fan of yours can see you trying to continuously move forward. And most of us, I think pretty much all of us, I would hope, see your progress and you need a recharge from a week's worth of content you push out. Because I mean, there's hours in those few minutes that you put out. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate you guys coming on this stream and kissing my fucking ass. <laughs> it's not so much uh, an ass kiss, guy. You, you, need to, well, well, you need to stop putting your, your thumb up there and go, ah, we know you're sucking, man. It's all good. Just need you I guys mean, to cup the balls yeah. a little more. That's all I need. Let's, Shave them well, let's, put it, let's put it this way. I can pretty much do anything on, the, on my 3D set and make quite big sets, so I'm not very limited on that. And my actual storyline still, I am failing uh, miserably right now. I've got one decent story left, and I can't think of what the fuck to do next after that. Yeah, I've been there too. That that I run into that problem back when I was a novelist trying to write books. And uh, ugh, don't even oh. get me started on that. Not um, to go deep into that, but once you start the set the sitcom and everything's pretty much starting to grow and build, do you plan to possibly reapproach that? <laughs> if I could find the time, I'd imagine that my workload is only going to increase when oh, I can start doing that. But we'll see. Uh, Crazy Loon drops five to say, "Last I can give, I know I know nothing about building, and even I know you don't pour a foundation on grass." Yeah, you damn skippy. Um, and a D in Bronze Gauntlets in the chat says, "Magog tripping over his robe in the woods." Yeah, funny shit like that. Uh, welcome to the stream, Damien. We can hear you banging your microphone around. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, oh, are exciting, you, by the way. Are you are you moving your table currently? <laughs> like, are you are you are you moving house or something? Like, what are you dragging across the floor? The dead boys. I accidentally sat down too fast, and my ball slapped off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have that exact same problem. We're like brothers. You're too white, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's just an albino. Yep. So what's your screen name? What should we call you? It's Eidegger. Eidegger. I-D-A-G-G-E-R. Oh, I, I dagger. Quit Pretty saying much. it so fucking fast. It sounded like an energy drink. Drink Eidegger. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm a Jersey boy. <laughs> I, I won't remember that. Can I call you Rob? Yeah, so your eye dagger, are you like Apple's new suicide product? <laughs> I've never thought Nobody of that. Nobody gets me. <laughs> Nobody gets me. Uh -huh. This is why writing jokes is so hard. Nobody gets me. Uh, but yes, welcome to the uh, stream, eye dagger, that I can slip my wrist with. Thank you, Steve Jobs. Main question does it have an earbud port? <laughs> it plays sad, sad music as you cut. Uh, Except the blade is. Uh, extra. It's like as so as soon as it enters and 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 the the blood and the and the blade senses blood with its algorithm, it starts to play AFI. Nice. Just just silver and cold coming out of the speakerphone handle as you carve in into your flesh. <laughs> it's the eye dagger. Wow, I guess I'm more metal than I thought I was. <laughs> and it can sense when you kill. Yeah. And it can sense when you kill somebody else, and you're not killing yourself. So when you go start, when you start stabbing some hooker, it plays Miss Murder by uh, AFI. Ooh. Does it have a kill count? Do I have a kill count like on the bottom of my feet when you stab me with somebody? It goes up by one. Hey, Absolutely. Miss Murder, Absolutely. can I? Hey, yeah, you Miss go Murder. Kill count. <laughs> <laughs> it just resets weekly. <laughs> um. <laughs> a D in Bronze Gauntlet dropped two dollars just to say I fagger. <laughs> um, a D in Bronze Gauntlet is uh, well, let's just say not all heroes wear capes. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, 
Yeah, I'm looking at uh, at a couple different properties. I want the one that already has a contract on it. It's nice five acres down a secluded road. The name of the road is Sleepy Hollow. Oh, that's perfect. Nice. And it's five acres that backs up to just some woods that are, I guess, is owned by the state. So there's no neighbors behind me for miles. There's a couple neighbors down that street, but it would be a perfect little secluded piece of property. But it's also right outside of the the, the city limits of BB Arkansas. So I have good fucking internet down that road. Could like you, I've already been out there to look at it, and it's like you can see the big black cable lines on the on the on the telephone poles. You know, you're like, yep, that's cable. <laughs> that's fiber optic. Could you petition? Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, if you were to build a village there, you could have that in the background, knowing that it wouldn't be built into something else then. Well, I don't own those woods. No. No. That, that five acres, the property line ends at the tree line. But it's yeah. nice knowing that the woods beyond, even though I could, I, I don't, that's not part of my property. It's good to know that it's not owned by anybody. That's, it's that's just, what I mean, yes. Yeah, it's just woods. So you know, no one will be building on that. So you can have the uh, yeah. Build, so build. even if I were to build the village on that back <laughs> half, um, I don't know. Let me show you. You guys want to see this? I can. I yeah. can get the sky yeah. view. Well, that could be a fun thing to do, right? Just uh, entertain the people by <coughs> showing you guys some Google Earth shit. No, yeah, you... it's, it's much better than having yeah. our fucking pictures. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'll go to can my. Go ahead. I'll go to my Zillow's. My Zillow's. It's one of these, you know, like online look for fucking property. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Good. Now, this is a weird thing, but I worked for AT and T for a while, and I know that they would actually try to buy tower space in places where there wasn't good service because they couldn't piggyback off of somebody else's tower. Right. Is, is that in any chance a financial option that you'd think that maybe somewhere at the far end of your property that, that, you know, you can rent them out or just have them buy out outright a spot where they can put their tower. I uh, don't think it works that way. You uh, even if you could the 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 Wi-Fi kind of internet that you can get out in the country through some companies, you can get, you know if there's an Omni antenna nearby, like a tower, because my boss used to do that yeah. that type of work. It's decent, but it's not as strong as having fiber optic run straight to your house. Sorry. Okay. The, the tower internet you can get here from like certain companies out in the country is like 30 megs tops. This. So not really what I was looking for. But let me share the screen here. Yeah, I was just killing time until you shared the screen. Yeah, but I can't. What, why is it not giving me a prompt? Bonus? Yeah, I'm clicking on it. Oh, I have to physically stop. Present to everyone. Uh, hey, hey. Inception. All right, so here's the property that, that this bad. is the one that has a contract on it. So, but if the contract falls through, I would I just want to I just love to get it. So you can see the five acres is fenced. Yeah, it's got a nice turnaround driveway, and look at that. Just pretty. It's just really. I could put the village right back there in that back plot. <laughs> you know, nice. like you know. Um, you could yeah. you could hide bodies for days. I know, yeah. right? <clears throat> and it does have, you know, like I said, it's a bit of an older mobile home. But that's the kind of place you're going to get in my price range. Now, if I could afford $300,000 mortgage, then we'd be looking at way really nice properties I have found. <laughs> like, trust me, there, there are some dream properties that I would love to get, but I don't make enough money. Uh, but this would be an okay starter home with plenty of land. Um, and, you know, I, it's got some, it, I, I'd, I'd replace the carpet. You know, it's not, it's not perfect inside. I'd probably have to do some painting and some cosmetic stuff. Um, still, still where I live, that'd be about 2 million pounds. <laughs> right. Fuck right. England. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But at least, you know, the kitchen has a nice new, you know, wood laminate floor, nice new cabinets, countertops. Um, that's usually pretty important, you know, for people when they're buying a place. Um, it's got enough bedrooms in it that since I'm alone, I'm single and I ain't got no kids, I could use like two of the bedrooms for sets, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, it would need some tender love and care, but I'd be willing to put some work into it, you know? Yeah. And but, so this but, is what it looks like from the sky. This is it right here. But but the question is, do, do you get to keep the big shiny lazy boy? No. <laughs> as far as I know, those pictures were taken a while ago because this place has sat empty for two years. Oh. So, yeah. So, but you can see the fence line. And that's my luck, too. It's sat empty for two years. And the moment I want to fucking go look at it, they're like, oh, somebody made an offer yesterday. Fuck! <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, you can see the, the, the fenced in five acres right here, you know, yeah. and that little front field right there has like a cross fence. So they probably had horses and I could build the big studio, like 50 by 50 studio shop there with like green screen walls and shit and still have this back like three and a half acres to do whatever the fuck I want on. Yeah. You know, and it looks a little funny because, uh. It, this this part of town actually has a 3D huh. map, so you can kind of turn it like that, kind of kind of look. But you can see it's a pretty secluded little area. There's only about you know seven houses back in there, owned, owned by other people, and it's got internet, you know. And yeah. those are the woods I told you about that like pretty much nobody owns, or if somebody owns them, they're not doing anything with them, you know. Extra. <clears throat> So it would be awesome to be able to have this little plot because it backs up to just nothingness, you know, Yeah. for like a good, you know, at least a half mile. And, you know, there's a field back there. looks like somebody keeps it cut for hay, but, mm. you know, there's a pond. Yep, that's a pond. And that looks like a creek. You can see the break in the trees. Yeah. Oh, wow. So there's a creek running through that wood. Th those woods there, but it's a nice piece of property. I, I wish I could get it. If the if the buyer if the if the buyer falls uh, falls out of it, I will. Uh, I'll go look at it. I'll hop on that shit. I'm gonna go get pre qualified Monday morning. Now the one that I'm going to look at tomorrow is this one, and it's the one that's on the three and a half acres, hmm. but it's been completely remodeled on the inside. Yeah. It's been completely redone, every every bit of it. The lady told me on the phone, it's it's completely been redone. And you could tell. Oh, you know, yeah. you won't need to do much work for that. Yeah, this one is only 75000 and I wouldn't have to do much work. But it comes with a lot less land, uh, three and a half acres. And it's a little bit like I rode down the road, and I was like, that guy's an asshole. And I kept driving. I was like, that guy's an <laughs> asshole. Like, I could just tell by the... <laughs> By the shape shape of their yard, I can tell, you know. But I'll I'll kind of show you the uh, the property there. We'll go to the map. Let's not um, try and dox too many people. It's it's public record, dude. It's on a fucking website for sale. You know. Oh well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what do what are so my pointing fans out do? pointing out actually right. So there there it is, and you can kind of you can kind of see the three and a half acres kind of goes back into a little field. So mm -hmm. this is this is about it right here. This three and a half acres right here. Yeah, you know. So there there's some you know space because these buildings here, I guess the sellers want to take with them because it says in the description, the outbuildings do not convey uh, to the new owner. So they're going to take those with them. But I'd have this little empty spot here to build a nice studio, and I'd still have this backfield to do something with. I could potentially plant trees all along this fence and hide hide the property. You know. Yeah. Nice. Still um, plenty of room. Yeah, but like this guy's an asshole. This guy's a fucking asshole. <laughs> Just a how can, asshole. You, how yeah. can you tell? What gives it away? Okay, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, not that guy. Did I drop it in the wrong place? I drove down this road and I was like, "There's, it's fucking junked. You know, like they got old cars and it's a junkyard. They got like rebel flags hanging in the windows and shit. And you're like, oh my god, some Dixie Mafia motherfuckers. 
this must be an old this is a yeah this is 2007 so yeah the, the, this yeah, is not what it looks it. like yeah when you drop down to the road it says down here when that image capture happened so it was a lot nicer in 2007 because I, I know that's the guy man i drove past his house and I was like, mother of God, there was like five cars right here. There was like a big shop built on the side of his house. There was like rebel flags hanging in the windows and shit. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> but you can tell. Let me go back. Hold on. You can tell without even calling the company. See that big, thick, black cable? That's fiber optic. Nice. Oh. Or it's cable internet, at least. I, I looked mm. in the area, and Suddenlink offers their uh, 150 meg internet out here. So well, I would at least have good internet. Yeah, but you might end up with an episode of Magog Meets Arkansas's Finest. <laughs> Banjo's playing as a theme song. Yeah, I could, like, as I turned down this street, oddly enough, that scene from Deliverance started playing in my head. Um, <laughs> but from the road, even though this was taken in 2007 and doesn't have the buildings and stuff, that's the same damn trailer, you know? So it's been there for a while. I think this place was built in 1995. Yeah. Mm. So it's a bit, even though it's been remodeled completely on the inside, it's a bit of an older place and that brings the price down on the plus side. Uh, you could get someone knocking on your door saying, we can offer you security and protection. <laughs> right? And if I put 5% down, if I can't get a VA loan for it because it's an old trailer, because um, a lot of times the VA loan will not say yes. The VA won't say yes to manufactured homes. They want you to buy an actual oh, yeah. fixed home. So if I have yeah. to get a traditional loan and I put 5% down, my payments are only four forty three a month. That's not bad. Did you already qualify for the other parts of the <laughs> home loan from the VA? No, that's what I'll be doing Monday. Uh, they have but, to have like two years of continuous uh, full-time employ. Oh, yeah. No, I. Uh, that's that's because I thought about buying last year, and I tried to get pre-qualified. And, yeah. and, man, I did, I'm self-employed, and I could only show a year of that. Uh, that's so uh, they they denied me, but before they denied me, they did pre qualify me for a hundred uh, up to one hundred and eighty thousand. Nice, that's nice. So oh, I know, cool. know I can get at least that this time around. Now that doesn't mean I want to spend that because sure. I don't. I'm not entirely sure I want a twelve hundred dollar a month fucking mortgage. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Scabby one eight one ninety five is old for a manufacturer, but. I, I have to think about the, the short term. I got to think about I got to think about how to expand my business. I could always just live in that little place for a few years and then have it hauled away. You know, a nice uh, remodeled unit like that, I could probably sell to one of these places that buys used homes and they'll come out and truck it away and they'll pay you, you know, four or five grand for it. So as long I, as the scrap's good. Right. Um, or they, they resell it. They, there's yeah. plenty of places around here that resell. Re, they, they sell refurbished manufactured homes. Well, um, and, and theoretically, with, with extra rooms, you could actually shoot some more Scarian porn. <laughs> yes, I did like the mirror on the ceiling uh, in the remodel. Yes, that was yeah. right there, you know. But... Um, yeah, I mean, for the price, I probably can't go wrong because it does come with a little bit of land, and that's what I'm really after because I can always build something new when I have the money, and I can have that old place carted off, and that would make the resale value, if I ever move up in life, that would make the resale value even better is putting a new place on it, you know? Tell them you're going to take the village out of the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I... That is a worry. If I build the village on that property, I'd have the neighbor people just like I'd, I'd have man, like just like I'd have kids in that neighborhood fucking hanging out in my village when I'm not home and shit. <laughs> well, I'll start worrying about you if you get a pair of aviators, right? Drink the Morskari and Kool Aid. But <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go look at it tomorrow. But I'm not 100 percent sold on it because of the area. I mean, it is a little. 
even for somebody who lives in Arkansas, it's a little bit too rednecky out there, <laughs> you know. That's a fair point. I mean, I've looked. There was another place I looked at Friday in in J, in Jayville that um, was only fifty nine thousand, and it had five acres and a completely like a brand new trailer on it. It was a, it was like a twenty fifteen. You know, like 2015 or 2016. That's not old at all, you know? And I was yeah. like, why do they only want 60000 for it? It's got a 2016 fucking trailer on it, five acres. I got out there and I was like, oh, oh, that that's why. This is the most horrible place I've ever seen. <laughs> like, mm. I drove down that road and it was like, junkyard, junkyard, burned down meth house, junkyard, junkyard, burned down meth house. And then I got to that that trailer, and I was like, "No wonder it's only sixty thousand. <laughs> there was a guy with wow. twenty fucking washing machines in his front yard. Wow, just a small business, man. So how far hey, afield are you willing to look from from where you live now? Within an hour. Now there's a really there's a really decent plot of land in Bald Knob that I thought about getting. Um, cause that's another option. I could buy a plot of land that has nothing on it and drop a, drop a home on it. I have that option too. I can get a builder's loan instead of buying a property that already exists. Mm. Yeah, but your, your <coughs> <that's> your priority. <coughs> right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> You're all right. Yeah. Breathe that out. <coughs> but yeah, like I'd have to find the right piece of property that also has internet access. But if I found the right piece of property, let's say five to ten acres for forty, fifty thousand, and it had internet access, I could buy that and then get a loan for like one twenty, and I'd have seventy thousand to build a place. Hmm. You know, yes, bald knob, Manny. That is an actual town in Arkansas, and I also kind of like the idea of Magog's more scar. Oh, no. The I, I love the idea of more scar studios. Located in Bald Knob, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> come get, come out to Bald so, Knob and get your Morscar freak on. <laughs> um, so I know it's a little uh, far, a little bit further ahead. You're just trying to get the location. How is the contractor search going? Or are you going to just see if you can pull from the local fan base that might have the skills or what have you? Or to, to build the village? Yeah, yeah. I don't even know where to start there. I have no idea. I mean, outside of finding some people to help with labor and try to just build some nice, like, medieval-looking log cabins, essentially is yeah. what I want to do. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if I can find the right people that, like, oh, dude, I totally help you, and I'm a, I'm an architect, and I can design these buildings and stuff. Outside of that, we're just gonna have to cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, can I just warn you if the if the architect's name is Mike Brady, uh, turn him down. Uh, I don't think I can even afford that guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he's <laughs> better. Uh, DM Bronze Gauntlet says I have to go run now. Happy house hunting. Thanks, DM. If you're still watching, um, sorry, I, sorry, Mr. Chat, your super chat. The reason I brought that up is because a lot of when I was uh, living in Clarksville, a lot of our uh, contractors throw up instant houses. Just basically over a weekend, more or less. And yeah. they say they're ready to live, but whenever you look through them, it's just you're just waiting for something to go fucking wrong. Well, when it comes Either to building, yeah, but when it comes to building the medieval village, they're not mm -hmm. meant to be structures people can actually live in. That's fair. They're for filming. <laughs> they're for filming the show. They don't have to be perfect, you know. Uh, now no, we. But you still got to keep them up to code. No, you don't. Not, it, not if you live in the county. It's Arkansas, baby. If you live ah. outside of city limits, you can have junk in your yard. You can have you can build whatever you want. How do you think them rednecks did that add-on and fucked it up? Because there's no building yeah, codes. They just poured the fucking concrete onto the grass. There's no building codes in the fucking county. You can build whatever the fuck you I'm want. I'm actually surprised. Oh, yeah. Some places have <laughs> county codes outside the city. Yep, Arkansas don't. <laughs> well, awesome, you... Uh, well, yeah, that makes sense now. Yep. Berserk Shirt Bear asks, so if I create a character and it contradicts your lore, is the lore rewritten or do you countermand it? Uh, I'd help you rewrite it. 
if you create just the basics of a character, like your name and kind of how you want to see your character, like say you want to be like a Viking type of character. You're like, I'm a warrior, and um, but I'm not like a noble knight with flowers in his hair. I want to be like a gritty, you know, Viking-like, you know, warrior, and this is my character name. Then I would be able to be like, okay, well, if you're that, then you're most likely from Volgoth. You're most likely from one of the 10, 10 Volgothan barbarian clans, you know, and so, and I'd be able to help you build some of that uh, because not everything has been written. It's all still up in my head, you know. I hope that answers your question, Berserk. Um, Scab181 just gave $10, didn't uh, say anything, but thank you, Scab. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I'd uh, definitely be up for being a character in Moscow. Mr. Gurry is a bit too well dressed to be from Mos Moscow. Yeah, yeah. And he'd have to be, well, obviously myself. You know what I love about the idea of building this sitcom is that all the fans mm. and actors and stuff that want to like join this thing and come out to Arkansas just to be in like one or two episodes, even if it's like background characters or side characters that end up dying during the episode. I just love that there's people from all over the world that are fans of mine that want to participate in this. Oh, yeah. And I could get somebody like Mr. Gurr who is English to come out and more scar is just filled with like, I just love the idea of like, here's this proper English, English guy who walks into nightshade village to be like, Oh, do you have, do you have a necromancer here named McGaw? You know, do you, do you, I'm, I'm currently looking for a necromancer named <laughs> named McGaw, and then one of the town guard, one of the townsfolk is like, "Now listen here, you fancy pants! Like, what the fuck kind of oh, accent oh, is that?" Yeah. <laughs> oh like, shit! Um, like myself or um, a Megon. Yeah, there's there's plenty that could do it. Uh, oh yeah, I'm good I'm friends with a Megon. I'm yeah, good friends with Omegon and Irate Bear. You know, they'd love, they've already told me they'd love to come out now and, and make a cameo, you know, come visit Arkansas. You know. um, can't wait to see them. Uh, people are asking mm. about the big property that had 40 acres. Yeah, that's a no go. It's a money pit. I went, looked at the house and it has foundation problems. It has sinking ceilings. It's got holes in the walls. It's not good. Uh, I just, I didn't want to spend that kind of money on a place that I'd basically just have to burn down. <laughs> you know? Well, it would probably cost more to, yeah, demolish it and then rebuild it. You could load the property value if you just dressed up as Magog and burned down the house instead of just <laughs> staring at it right passes by. Yeah, all them. Or better yet, wait. Some fucking wizard came and burned it all down. It was so funny because I wanted to see the land, though. And so after I got done touring the house, I told the realtor she could go because she locked up the house. And I was like, I'm just going to have a walkabout on the land because nobody was living there. She's like, okay, you go ahead. And she didn't even know this, but apparently the family that's selling that place decided to use the field for cows until it was sold. And I had no idea. And she didn't have any no, any idea or she would have warned me because I went walking back there. I wanted to walk back to the pond. I got you were to the sandals, weren't you? No, I got back to the pond. Why the fuck would I be wearing sandals in the winter? I got back to the <laughs> pond and... I'm standing there at the water's edge going, you know, the, the house is shit, but boy, it'd be lo I'd love to own this property. And I'm looking at the pond. I can see the fish biting. And all of a sudden behind me, I heard. <laughs> and I turned and there was this big ass fucking bull with huge horns staring at me. Oh, shit. I was like, ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> I was like, so if, no, he, if so he charges just, at me, I'm going to yeah. dive right out of the way just in time for him to fly into the lake. You know? Yeah, there's there's hard cows there, and then there's half cows there. Yep, I just slowly walked away. It was like, good boy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 going to look at other properties. I'm going to go look at that place I just showed you guys tomorrow. It's a good price, but if I'm not impressed or I need to do too much work to that place, it's not going to be worth it for three and a half acres. Honestly, I, mm. I might just wait until another property opens up. I can't, the, the biggest mistake I can make right now is get too excited and buy the wrong property. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, 
I am going to go ahead and go get pre-qualified so I know how much I can spend for sure, 100%, but I know it's going to be at least a hundred to 120000 because last year they wouldn't even give me the loan, but they still pre-qualified me at one hundred and eighty. I mean, fuck's sake, I have no debt. I've paid off all my credit cards. The only thing I own is a car. Um, I don't have any student loans or anything and because I use my GI Bill. I made plenty of money last year and the year before as a self-employed YouTuber to, uh, to, to, to qualify me, and my credit score is 820. Yeah, I was just about to ask you about that because uh, I remember you talking about this last year where no one would touch you for a loan because yep. you were a, a, a YouTuber. So that, what's changed? Is it just basically because you've been doing it a year more? Yep. They they were like, okay, we, we're kind of uncomfortable with you making money on the internet, but we realize that's a thing. But you're, you're technically self-employed. You own your own business. So we need to see two years worth uh -huh. of that. And that was I and and when I last year I'd only had my first year, 2017. Mm. Now I have 2017 and 2018. And it's gone better as well. I'm yeah, I made I made twelve, fifteen thousand more last year than I did the, my first year. Well, it's showing growth, so that's definitely yeah. Yep. I mean, I I was doing real good last year. It wasn't until the Patreon debacle at the end of December that I really got fucked. Because <clears throat> a lot of my fan base overlap overlaps with Sargon's apparently. Because when Sargon got kicked off of Patreon. A lot of his, uh, all of his fans basically just left Patreon in protest. That yeah. included my fans. So I went from nearly 3,000 a month to like 900. Ouch. So that really hurt. <laughs> just so much pain. I just lost like 60% of my income. And they didn't, they didn't all follow me to subscribe star. So I didn't yeah. get, I didn't gain it back on another platform. So that's why I felt comfortable just leaving patreon because i had gained enough on subscribe star to equal patreon so why the fuck would i stay with patreon because they're douchebags so i yeah. felt comfortable enough leaving because i lost so mu so much money you know right. yeah it's a scary time when you think patreon could even find something wrong with your channel to say yeah we're gonna have to shut you down sorry yeah, that's also why I left. I left because it's like, how, how long before they find something they don't like about me? Yeah. You know, I'm not even going to give them the chance. Fuck them. Fuck them. You know, I fired them. I didn't leave Patreon. I fired them. Yeah. Because they forgot that they work for us. Their payment process. You're my fucking banker. Yeah. That's what you yeah. are. They are you know? a service. Yeah. They forgot that shit. They came out in that new New York Times article and was all like, we pay for the creative, we fund the creative class. We pay creators to do good work and stuff. No, you don't. The fans do. You process yeah. shit for us. We pay you a fee to process our payments for us. You're a mediary, motherfucker. You're an intermediary. And they forgot that. They got fucking, you know, they got high in fucking clouds, think the shit don't stink, you know? So, yeah, I, a lot of people are like, you left Patreon. I didn't leave Patreon. I fired them. Because <laughs> they worked for me, and they forgot that shit. And they forgot how to do their jobs properly. Yep. And a lot of people did follow me to subscribe star, and I appreciate that. And a lot of people bought art prints, and that really helped. Especially when you're left. Gosh, I still have like 850. Come on, man. Like... <laughs> as soon as I can it's, afford it's it, it's going to be number mine. In fact, Indeed. I want to get all that shit. I want to get T-shirts. I want to get all the uh, um, Fright Power merch as well as soon as I can afford it. Yeah, I need to do some more uh, updated T-shirt designs because the, the I took the old ones off because they were like two years old. I need to do new designs, and uh, that'll be available and stuff. And I really appreciate everybody and what they can give. I really do. I... Uh, I fucking love every one of my fans and their their support, but it is it's a tough business. Um, and that's 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 all I'm speaking about. I'm not I'm not judging my fans for leaving Patreon. I don't blame them at all. They had their reasons, and uh, I had my reasons too. You know, um, I, I'm not mad at all that I lost that much money. It just it's the nature of this fucking business. You know. Hey, quick question. 
do you do any advertising like just outside of like word of the mouth from you know the mcgoganites going hey check this guy out uh yeah i i, I have facebook and i have twitter and i have minds and i have gab and i put my videos on all of them every time i put a new video out i link it all out i've even boosted a couple posts on like facebook paid money and just to see if it would work, and it didn't really work. What's really helped me is to actually link my videos to hashtags and stuff. That's really helped. Um, you know, that's that's really helped get my content out there because it's YouTube's algorithm really rewards you if you talk about trending topics and you put out videos often, like every day if you can. That's how they do it now. And that sucks because it, it that hurts a lot of really creative people that can only do like one video a month. Yeah. Because so much time goes into their videos that, you know, they yeah. put like high production, high quality, but low quantity, and the algorithm punishes them for that. And that pisses me off. Yeah, even though I've not been putting up anything for well i put out a couple of videos for christmas but since then fuck all but it usually takes about two weeks to do a 20 minute video just getting everything right right by then if i, I do want if i do any uh, current affairs the thing's over by by the time it's released yep um detlaf says if i ever win the powerball lottery i will give you f half a million i appreciate that <laughs> I wish one of my fans would win that shit. I played it the other day because it's up to like 620 million. Someone's got to win it. Yeah. Uh, There's only one of us. Right. I, man, I'd love it. The... Oh, if I won that shit, like it'd be one thing if a fan won it and decided to give me like half a million or a million or something, I would love that too. But if I won it and had like half a million dollars, half a billion dollars, Oh, man. I would build some weird shit. <laughs> oh, my God. The president. <laughs> I'm going to build some weird shit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of people... Why do I picture, like, a statue to yourself? <laughs> Get out of my Just head. Long. Get out of my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, no, I... I uh, um, a lot of people win that kind of money. They just would just go be rich, wouldn't they? They'd quit their jobs. They'd quit everything. They'd probably get off social media because once you win that kind of money, your name gets put in like public, you know, record that you're the one who won it. Unless you live in like, there's only seven states in the entire United States that allow you to collect lottery winnings anonymously. Uh, really? Every other state that offers the lottery you have to take the pictures and talk to reporters and your name gets put in a lottery winners list. And, uh, harder. and, and when that happens, you start getting like cousins you've never heard about calling you and shit, you know, like <laughs> you, you suddenly family, you never knew you had start showing up at your door and stuff. And, and that's every where every charity under the sun contacting. Oh you. yeah, you got to basically change your number. You've got to fucking do everything. Yeah, uh, you know, um, that guy that won the biggest lottery in the history of the United States last year around Thanksgiving. If you guys oh, remember, two billion was it? Yeah, it was one point six billion dollars. One point six billion, and the guy who won it was from South Carolina, and that's one of the seven states that allows you to co uh, collect it anonymously. That lucky motherfucker. Not only did he become a billionaire overnight, but he got to do it anonymously. Nobody knows who the fuck won that thing. Let's put that into perspective. Disney bought the Star Wars rights for six billion. Well, it was four and a half, actually. But yeah, I get it. Four and a half. So he, yeah, he could have basically afforded just almost fifty percent of Star Wars. No, uh, the richest rapper in in music history is, believe it or not, Jay Z. He's worth almost a billion dollars personal wealth. Huh. Um, almost a billion. Probably. Yeah, almost. It's like he's worth like nine hundred million, right? Like in one in one fucking lottery ticket, you became richer than Jay Z. <laughs> oh. 
isn't that like the dream though? Be richer than Jay Z. Yep. Yeah. Oh, trust me. If I had that kind of money, I wouldn't leave Arkansas and I wouldn't quit my job. Y'all would see some weird shit though. Y'all would see some Game of Thrones production <laughs> quality on my fucking. Oh my God, I'm Jesus. Back. All right, guys, you heard it here. Start playing the Powerball. Yeah. You guys have no idea. I saw, like, I saw, like, because sometimes I watch all these different websites. There's this one property for sale. It was, uh, it was, it was 1,400 acres for $13 million in Arkansas. It had a mountain. Like, you could buy a mountain. <laughs> Uh, there, it, like I was looking at this property and it was like, it's a great property to be subdivided or you could just keep it for your own personal hunting. And I'm like, $13 million for, for 1,400 acres? Like, I looked it up. That's a quarter the size of San Francisco. Fucking hell. <laughs> Not just Nightshade Village, but... I would build side. like... I would build like entire towns that would go to war with each other in the <laughs> show. <laughs> like, I would... I... <laughs> So Just move the up. sign up front. Welcome to Morse car, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. The, dude, that's so big you would get lost on it. You like and while you you're not shoot, true. And while you're not shooting shows, you can just shoot game. Yeah, Everybody's exactly. Dangerous game. There's like bears and shit. Man, like <laughs> just imagine that though. Like I'd I'd buy a property like that and build castles and villages outside yeah. the castles. And catapult and point, shit. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd build some weird shit, man. I really would. Monty Python, but more Scar Edition. Fuck. People would be like... <coughs> if anybody drove by that property and saw like the castle up on top of the mountain, they'd be like, what the fuck is <laughs> going on here? <laughs> a D in Bronze Gauntlet says a giant statue of Magog, a giant 100 foot tower, an entire small town, filming warehouses, a water tower, a small armory, security, and three brothels. You're damn right. How many brothels? <laughs> I think you need more. Three. I, I'm going to need more than three. <laughs> Time to get my Arkansas security license. It'd be, the, <laughs> it'd be the largest LARPing and Renaissance fair. Land, because when I'm not filming, that's what exactly what I do. I'd host entire Renaissance events and oh, LARP events and shit. It'd be the largest one in the country. People would be like, "There's that literally would... real castles out there. We gotta go." People would literally, God. I'd host weddings and shit. Like people could stay inside the castles for their weddings. These would be proper castles too. They'd have like giant fucking hearth halls, you know. <laughs> but, but the question that that I want to ask is: Is prima nocta in effect? The moment you step on my property, it is. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but my God, you would have to get the ordained so you could do the weddings. Well, of course. But, you know, like, what else are you going to do with half a billion dollars? I mean, come on. You know? Uh, shit. Now the fiance is looking at me ugly. <laughs> 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 That'd be a lot of profit if you could do the huge Ren Fair oh, on man, the off yeah. season. Yeah, I'd create like a, it'd have massive parking. People could show up. They could tour the entire land. They could get in like these these carts, and I'd have like paths to the different places. And they could like, or they could ride horses to make it more realistic. I'd have all kinds of stuff, man. I'd have all kinds. People would go nuts. People would go fucking nuts. It'd be the medieval Disneyland in Arkansas, man. I mean, you could actually drive around electric golf carts, but have somebody sitting on the back clapping coconuts. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, but I also have to be realistic. That's the pie in the sky dream that'll probably never happen. I'm never going to have a fan that has that much money and is just going to give it to me. I'm never going to win the fucking Powerball as much as I play it when it gets high like that. And I, I'm not a gambler. I, I, I only play it when it gets really high like that. Because, you know, why not? You got to take a chance, right? But it's right. never going to happen. It's I got to I gotta settle with what I can do right now. And that right now, it seems to be the only thing I can do is find me a place so that I can expand my content and hope for success in the future to be able to expand even more, you know? Other than that, I can't, uh, 
I can't do much else, you know. But it would be cool, man. I'd even get like some sort of Hollywood animatronic company that makes animatronics and shit. I'd be like, build me a full size dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. So that when people like ride the horses past the mountain on the land, there'd be like a big cave on the side, and all of a sudden the dragon would come out and blow fire and shit. Like it'd be like a whole experience, you know. <laughs> Holographic Poe. Yep, man, I'd do some. Oh, I'd do some crazy shit. My parents would probably think I was insane. You know, well, like they don't I'm already. Sure, sure they don't, yeah, I'm just gonna, I was gonna say they probably do already. <laughs> they pretty much do, but um, it would be great. Like, why are you building three castles? Because there's three cities on my property, Mom. Like, well, yeah, my parents think I'm weird, and I don't even wear a fucking robe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'd have like I'd have jousting events and all that. It'd be medieval times on a grander scale, you know. I miss jousting. <clears throat> they tried to make it an official sport. I watched a TV show one time that was like modern jousting. Like all the armor yeah. was like like modernized and shit. Yeah. And it was like made of like fiberglass. Mm. And like they all had teams. And they were really trying to make it like an actual sport. That would be pretty cool. I mean, I've seen something going around Facebook recently where it's this French um, fencing uh, society have included uh, lightsaber stuff. I'm not oh, thinking, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, but you're just hitting something that lights up that can break easily. Why not just use actual, well, not real swords per se, but really something that's not going to break. Yeah. Detlaf says if he gets rich, he says, bet, bitch, I will give it all to you if you do that. Well then, you'll just have a city named after you. Then, <laughs> like one of the <laughs> one of the more Scarian city. I'll just have to rewrite the lore. You know, the, welcome, welcome to Bet, welcome, welcome to Morskar's trading, one of the largest trading cities in Morskar, Detlef. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to meet the Lord of Detlef? You could come out and be like, dude, I'm moving in. Which, and I'd just be like, which castle do you want? <laughs> I, you know, like. You're the one who paid for this shit. <laughs> Which castle do you want? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want a castle place uh, named after my my character. It would have to be the shittiest town imaginable. And you can't just say, welcome to Gur. It's got to be, welcome to Gur. Oh, man. <laughs> I'd be doing so, so much fucked up shit, man. I mean, literally, I'd, I'd live in a house because, you know, I'd want it to be as authentic medieval fantasy as I could make it. So, like, none of the castles would even have electricity. They'd all have fireplaces, candles, and stuff like that, right? So, I wouldn't want to live in that permanently because I yeah. still need, like, internet, television, movies, and stuff. So, I'd literally bought, I'd literally build, like, a $300,000 house. Like, not even that expensive of a house. A nice little place that I can call home, that I could go home to in the evening. And that, I wouldn't even spend a million dollars. If I won $600 million, I wouldn't even spend a million dollars on the stuff that I need in my life. So, I'd literally have, like, $599 million to just spend. Because I'd, I'd get everything I've ever wanted in life with a million dollars, and then the rest of it would just be like, hey, let's build Morskar. Like, for reals. <laughs> like, yeah. elven ruins. I might even build the Slaughter Ball Arena on that fucking land. Oh, that would be awesome. Jeez. <laughs> Slaughter Ball. <laughs> oh, I'm in. It, it, it would be such a massive attraction, too, that uh, it would, like, increase Arkansas's tourism by, like, 15%. Mm. <laughs> like, Arkansas would probably, like, the, the fucking government of Arkansas would probably give me a medal for fucking bringing yep. money into the state, you know? Old Bill will come and play his swacky sax on your opening day. Yeah, oh, fucking hell. I'd have the governor kissing my fucking ass. That'd be great. Although you'd probably need some sort of electrical stuff going through the the places. Yeah, it's to, probably to, better to have them hidden in the walls rather than. Yeah, to, to to have it open to the public, you need. It's got to pass like modern inspections, if, especially if yeah. you serve food and stuff like that. If you turn it into a business like that, yeah, I would probably still have electricity and stuff, but it would be hidden. Like you'd have to pull a brick out of the wall. 
and there'd yeah. be like an electrical plug and an internet plug and shit, you know? Like I'd do some weird shit, but I would make it like complete it would pass all inspections, you know. In and behind the fireplace. Or and every, every yeah, and everybody who sets foot on the property. This ain't no regular old like fucking, you know, this ain't no this ain't no fucking you know a haunted house yeah it's 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 not it, yeah this is not six flags okay this is not a theme park you have to sign a liability waiver because if you get on my property and go touring castles and medieval villages and you happen to get attacked by a bear you can't sue me it's the dark ages disneyland <laughs> with real plague victims <laughs> you know, <laughs> Could you, imagine working for, could you imagine working for me and like you come and sit down and be like, I really want to work here. It's been my dream job to live in a medieval world and I get paid to do it. Oh, yeah, you seem really nice. Do you have a costume? Do you have a character? Like, you know, and I, I go through the whole internet, you know, interview process. Oh, it's been a pleasure to meet you. You're Magog or Morskar. You're so awesome. Okay, you got the job. Cool. What is my job? You get to sit in the stockade for eight hours a day and let people throw tomatoes at you. <laughs> Damn it. T totally worth. You're right. Just start from the bottom. Yeah, and your hour lunch break is only 30 minutes. Welcome to hell. <laughs> you got to sing really poorly written show tunes in the stockade. Be happy about it. Right. I mean, like this beautiful woman walks in for, for a job interview and be like, so did I get the job? Yeah, you did. Am I a princess? Yes, again. <laughs> <laughs> and you ass over to brothel number three. <laughs> You're going to be working at the whore's nipple? <laughs> That's over in Detlaf. You'll find it. <laughs> Gertrude's the madame, so be nice. Hey, right. speaking of debt laugh, quick shout out. Dude, go back and play in what you would, would you? <laughs> Yay, he got a shout out in. Everybody rejoiced. Yay. 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 Squeak. And there was much rejoicing. Yay. Look at the chat rejoicing. You can hear it from here. <laughs> that would be so cool. That's the dream, man. Like, I, I hear a lot of people talk about what they would do if they won like half a billion dollars in the lottery, and it all sucks. Every fucking yeah. person I know. Oh, well, first I give this and that to my family and charities and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, that, yeah, I'd do that too because I'm a nice guy. I'd, I definitely give to Children's Hospital because they fucking saved my nephew's life. He had cancer, you know. But at, yeah. okay, tell me what you would do after all the nice things you would do. Like, tell me. Give me the greedy side of your answer, right? The self dog. You know what I'd do if I won the lottery? Two chicks. <laughs> <laughs> I get office space. <laughs> Can't you do that with, with without being rich? You know, two chicks would double up on a guy who looks like me without being rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy a fast car that I can't handle. That would be the craziest fucking... Like, people tell me all the time, they're like, oh, I'd buy a really nice house, and I'd buy a boat, and I'd buy a car. What would you do, man? I'd build a medieval world. <laughs> yeah. I'd build a medieval fantasy world and live inside my own imagination in real life. <laughs> I'm better than you. <laughs> You'd have that one person, but, but, but why? Why would you do this? Because look at all the people who win the lottery and they end up poor within like a year. Well, it's because they do dumb shit. Because they do dumb shit with it. First, they give like every single person they know like millions of dollars as a gift. They end up with an entourage of people that are just sucking the fucking life out of them that they think are their friends. And then they fucking buy like a 30 room mansion and don't realize that that shit costs property taxes. It, the electricity bill alone in a house that size would be what six thousand a month or something, you know? Yeah. Like, fuck that, you know? Even, how would they even use all those rooms? It's just wasted like space at that point. Yeah, no, I'd I'd put like a hundred million into a CD and every year collect and just collect the interest and just re-roll it back in every year, <laughs> you know. Uh, you you put it in a you put a hundred million dollars in a certificate of deposit at a bank. One, the owner of that bank will show up personally to lick your asshole, and <laughs> you 
will get like 2.75% at the end of that year. What's 2.75% of $100 million? <laughs> you'd a make, lot. Every year you'd make $2.5 million in interest alone. You'd always be rich. Then I'd take the rest of the hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank and I'd build fucking Morscar. And if I ever felt like we were getting dangerously close to running out of money, maybe we had a slow season, maybe not as many people came out for the Ren fairs and the weddings and stuff, I'd just pull that two and a half million, pay the bills. It's about being smart with the money, you know? Uh, Dean Bronzegauntlet says, I would start the Eighth Crusade with half a billion dollars. There you go. Uh, Citron says, I'd build a massive bunker in Alaska and disappear. No imagination. Mine's equally as kind of boring as that. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't help bring Magog's world to life? Well, yes. I mean, the rest of my money, though, i just buy out a lot of the land that's around where I have land and more or less build a palisade around it and build my studio and my uh, house. Yep, there you go. I mean, hey, I don't judge people with simple dreams, you know? I mean, I I get it, but, uh, man, some people, the, the way they spend money when they win something like that, it's like shit. You know, like they end up with like a yacht, like that they go out on once a year, but they paid millions of dollars for it. Just they do rich people shit without knowing how to be rich, you know, because that's the problem when poor people win a shit ton of money. They 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 didn't grow up like that. They don't know how to diversify their stocks and their their yeah. CDs and their portfolios and stuff to so that they always have money coming in. They just go and spend a bunch of it, and they're poor in two years. Gotta replenish them. <clears throat> Trust me, I've I've often wondered what it would be like to have a have a fan just be like, "Hey, I won the Powerball. Uh, here's twenty million dollars. Do do the show I've always wanted to see." <laughs> I'd be like, "Oh, you done fucked up. Give me that kind of money. <laughs> You're gonna see some shit, yeah. man. You're gonna see some shit." Morse car becomes the new Hollywood. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd just buy Marvel comics and make comics great again. Yeah, there you go. Good luck getting it out of Disney's clutches. I know. Uh, Ethan, I more profits than I would be able to fund <laughs> Marvel. Right. I would. I would uh, employ Ethan Van Skyver, though. Yeah, definitely. Ethan Long says that all sounds great, but what about President Magog? I don't want to be fucking president. Oh fuck! Would I ever? Well, want it sounds president. great. I'd be the but best. Wizard ever. And just because you have money doesn't mean you become president. I mean, you could. You look at Hillary. She spent millions on her campaign. She fucking lost. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair point. And <laughs> millions of the uh, other people's money as well. Yeah, Citron says fine. Underwater vault in Alaska with turrets. You're still not thinking outside the block box, Citron. You got that kind of money. You could literally become a Bond villain. And you just want to, like, disappear into a bunker? Fuck that. Build a fucking submarine and start threatening countries. <laughs> you know? give, give them time. The <laughs> like Moonraker. Yeah. That's I want to... to being a Bond villain. Right? I just, I, if I had that kind of money, I'd do that on purpose. I'd spend millions to hire, like, 600 hackers to just take over the airwaves for two minutes so that I could turn around in a chair and go, No, Mr. Bond. I expect you to die. <laughs> wow. and it would be on everybody's TV screen around the world. <laughs> you could claim you have the best ratings ever. You were yep. seen by everyone with a TV. Mr. Monkey Lit says, I got a ticket. If it hits, you are covered, Dark Lord. Thank you so much. That would be that would be awesome. Boy, I'd love, I'd love to see that super chat. Right? <laughs> I think YouTube would I think YouTube would just fucking just Cut, cut itself out just You're so right. I could see that much money. <laughs> I would fund for I would fund I I would find I I would probably set a little money aside to fund a uh, refugee camp. Not 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 for not for like people leaving Syria or anything because uh, you know I I I would fund a refugee camp to save English people. From their incredibly, incredibly censorious laws. 
That's what I would do. <laughs> I'd be like, we call this the, uh, I call this the Count Dankula camp for uh, censored <laughs> refugees. So then it'd be a British to <laughs> include Scottish as well. So anytime somebody gets in trouble yeah. and gets arrested for saying something naughty in England, I'd mm. I'd rescue them and bring them to my refugee camp. Yeah, please yeah, do not work. ever ever say uh, Count Dankula is English to his face. No, oh, he's not. <laughs> I know, but, you know, UK. You know. Yeah. yeah, all the UK refugees. Did you get call me English? All shit. See, they get See. shits for uh, jizz tickets. At least, at least I would try to do something to better my fellow man because yeah. all these rich people like to get on Twitter and YouTube and, and television and bitch and moan about the world and poor people, you know, and we should just open our borders to them and all that stuff. But they never really do anything. They don't spend their millions of dollars helping out. That's just too much trouble. That was the first time I ever heard of uh, Mike Cernovich when he tweeted to J.K. Rowling when she was saying, oh, bring all the immigrants here. We've got plenty of room. And he said, tell you what, if you put them in your your actual house, I will pay for their plane tickets. Yep. And just thunderous silence. Yeah. You know, it's like... You always see these celebrities getting on TV telling us how we should live and how we should judge other countries compared to our own. And I'm all for helping out people. I'd love it if America could just go into Mexico, just wipe out their cartel problem and establish a, a good government and good economy and infrastructure. But they got to stop coming across our fucking border illegally. Yeah, you know? their best people just go over to America because they know that's where it's Yeah, at. you got to so, stay in your fucking country and make it a better country, you know? I'm getting tired of this shit, man. We can't take everybody forever. It eventually will crash our economy, and then we'll be just like the place they fucking left. Anyway, I got it. I got into politics. God damn it, I said I <laughs> we, we didn't mean to do that. Let's it just, back. It just slipped in. Back now. to more sky. Yep, Ethan Long says the UK refugees could be your villagers. That's right. They show up and be like, "Thank yeah. God there's a place. There's a place we can hide from our censorious government." Thank you so much, Magog. Here's your medieval tunic. Get to work. <laughs> 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 this shit ain't free. <laughs> We're gonna work here, damn it. You get in the stockade. Why me? I don't like you. But I'm. <laughs> Oh, oh, I right things. there, you know me. I'm Alex. I'm Alex McGog in the stockade. I don't know an Alex. <laughs> Sargon shows up. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. But no, I, uh, you know, let get away from the pipe dreams. I, uh, I've, I've come to the realization that this year is my grow or die year. Um, because I lost so much money from the Patreon thing and stuff, if I don't turn this thing around in six, eight months, by the end of this year, I'm going to have to get a day job, you know, and I've, I've accepted that, you know, if I, ha if I have to do that, then so be it. I, I'm not afraid of working. I've been working since I was 15 years old, mowing, mowing lawns, you know, my, my yeah. parents brought me up right, you know, to fucking work for a living, you know, but you know, it's, I got to prepare for the worst and the best. And that's why I'm looking at properties that are maybe a little cheaper than I could actually get qualified for. I could probably get a mortgage for 180, 190,000, but that doesn't mean I want it because I have to prepare for the future. If this Magog thing doesn't work out, if this YouTube thing all falls apart and I end up having to go get a normal job, I have to be able to afford the place that I just got. Yeah. So I have to prepare for success as well as failure. So in the short term, before uh, Nightshade Village is a thing, any other different plans for the channel? Yeah, build bigger sets so that Magog could do more dynamic content. I mean, honestly, that's the next step is to get like, I'd, lo I'd love it if I could find a place, because I have found a couple places that already have like a shop on the land. They're a little out of the way of, of, of good internet, but uh, if I can find one that's like it that already has like a three-car garage shop on it as well mm -hmm. as a house to live, 
I turn that shop into a studio, have a green screen wall so that you, you do a lot with green screen, but God could be in all kinds of places with a green screen, right? You know, I build yeah. a much I build a much bigger dynamic wizard tower so that Magog can actually like interact with things. I can change camera angles. I get multiple cameras so I can do multi camera angles. I get like puppets that talk to Magog, you know, during episodes and stuff, and not just do Poe, but have like a little fucking dragon, you know, or some weird little creature in a cage that Magog ca uh, caught, you know. Yeah, I love what uh, Beard Barian's been doing with uh, his sets. On uh, side quest. Well, that's because he has a, He had to tear down his old set when he moved, and he hasn't built the temple yet. Yeah, he hasn't it's, rebuilt. It's, it. it's been really good that he's been able to do, just do that in the meantime. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I love that he's able to join side quest still and have like all kinds of fun backgrounds and stuff. It's actually added to the comedy you know, element. And eventually, yeah. I'd like to get to where, uh, when it comes to side quest, Magog's actually streaming with a animated green screen background. So it looks like he's in a, a dungeon with like candles flickering on the wall and you know stuff like that, you know. Now this might be a bit of a way off, but it's a suggestion I'm just gonna throw out there. Is there a chance that one day you could do a side quest live where you're all together in, in the same place with a not yep. well, a studio audience? Yeah, I'd love to do something like that, or maybe not a studio audience, but at least where we're, you know, I I always dream that the side quest crew would be able to fly down to Arkansas and meet for a weekend yeah. and uh, and be able to set up in my studio with their costumes, and we all can actually be in the same place for a special episode once a year, because those are plane tickets, you know, it'd be a pretty expensive show, so yeah. you know, it'd only be like a once a year, you know, like... And there'll probably be multiple shows throughout that week that they're down here because uh, we probably have all kinds of fun things to do while we're with each other in real yeah, life. Do some, yeah, do some pre-recorded stuff as well. Right, exactly. I and know it'll be that glass and stuff. You could always make one of them pay-per-view. <laughs> I don't, don't, want to be, I, I don't want to be that guy, though. But yeah, one could be pay-per-view if it's the biggest and most expensive. At least some kind of return. Right. At least sub, uh, subscribers to subscribe star. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's, I can uh, do that. Yeah, something like that. You know, we could do something like that. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of options. It's just the the important thing is I take the next step, and the next step is a big one. It it requires actually purchasing a place, like actually yeah. getting a mortgage for the first time in my life, and stop renting a tiny apartment, and that's the next big step. You know, Captain Crap says, I'd get what I need for my wife and I, and I'd invest a portion in you, Magog, then save to build up interest on so that I can then do the crazy shit whenever. Yeah, be smart with your money if you win that kind of fucking money. You know? <laughs> the Wednesday show. <laughs> Slay <laughs> save the blooper reel for Substar. Yeah, definitely. You know, special content like that would go to my... <laughs> My, my donators for sure yeah. um but uh yeah I, I i don't like to do more than two hours so we got half an hour left if there's anything you guys want to talk about or ask about or anything like that i mean you know this oh. is just kind of a i'm just wanted to update my fans which i feel like i did and i want to uh i just want to talk to some people tonight i was bored you know so you talked about the comedy at one point on your i think it was the TLDR or on the full show, I can't remember which one it was. It was uh, Magog would be the dark humor, but you said something about the rest of the cast more or less being like grim about everything. Yeah, I like the idea of taking like a very kind of because the world that I created for Magog actually came from a book I wanted to write five years ago. And I've been building that lore for the past five years just off and on when I felt like working on it, but I never wrote the mm -hmm. book. It was supposed to be a serious like fantasy horror genre book and then i started this youtube thing and i was like well i'm gonna be a wizard <laughs> you know so i i need yeah. i need lore you know i felt like it would be more grounded and the fans would like it more if the world magog was in felt real so i just applied what yeah. i had already done and that carries over like magog's world is actually a very serious place it's got death and plagues and magic and dragons and terrible civil wars and politics and 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 you know and stuff like that and 
very Game of Thrones, you know, very mature, you know, uh, content. So I thought it would be really funny to just like not do a slapstick show, not do a Monty Python, not all the way anyway. There can be scenes that are very reminiscent of Mel Brooks or Monty Python, but overall, I've always loved the idea of doing this very kind of serious drama that has all this politics and war and all this stuff, and then throwing Magog in the mix. <laughs> That <laughs> just fucks everything up. Like a, like a humorous grim dark. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um Yeah, I uh, a sidebar, Manny. Yeah, I do have a stream labs. I just didn't put it in the description this this time around because I didn't uh you know, I didn't feel like it was really necessary for people to donate to this particular show. I'm just talking with some friends, you know? Just talking with some friends. It's you know, like uh I actually, I actually appreciate you asking about that. Somebody was. Uh, Nuke, Nuke was asking about that. But, uh, yeah, I know YouTube takes a lot. But for some reason, even with Streamlabs up, when we do side quests, we have a Streamlabs. We never get as many donations on Streamlabs as we do YouTube. And I think it's because of the simplicity of YouTube. You just click the little money button, and boom, you're done. You type in what you want to type in, and it goes through, and it's right there. Streamlabs, mm -hmm. you got to like connect to your paypal you gotta do all this shit and p some people just don't like to do it they like the ease of access so youtube yeah takes a lot more money but more people use it so uh take, what 40 percent or 30 percent something it? like that yeah it's like 30 percent mm. yeah so oh yeah it's painful but it is it is um but yeah yeah i just I like the idea of that because my comedy has always been like a juxtaposition type of comedy, you know? It does add a, something that I see rarely in any kind of drama, dark drama nowadays. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, take for instance, some of my favorite movies are juxtaposition comedies where they take the stereotype of what you usually see in a, in a type of genre and they flip it on their head, on its head, and it and it completely surprises people. I'll give you a perfect example. One of my favorite horror comedy movies was a movie that came out a few years ago called Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, yeah. that, so. that is a yeah. perfect juxtaposition comedy where it takes this stereotype of the, you know, the evil country, you know, serial killer hunting teenagers when they go camping. I mean, that is a classic stereotype cliche of 80 slasher films, right? Yeah. And it just turns it on its head and makes like the kids think that they're the killers and they think the kids have like a suicide pact and is killing yeah. them all over the property. The you know? <laughs> throwing, them, throwing themselves into wood chippers and shit. Right. And it's just one of those, it's like a series of unfortunate events and mistakes. Yeah leads to this misunderstanding and that is juxtaposition and that's to the type of stuff where you take those tropes and you just whoop you flip them that's the type of stuff that i've always imagined doing for magog you have this very serious show that is the cliche kind of drama medieval drama very game of thrones or very uh last kingdom or something like that and then you you have this scene where like the, the the noble warrior from Akakesh is dying in the arms of his beloved and she's crying and there's tears streaming down her face. And the people from Akakesh, by the way, are that's the deserty region, so it's very Middle East. It's like that's where like a lot of the black people are from, I guess you could say. And then she's like screaming to the heavens, she's crying, her beloved is dying in her arms, and the sad music's playing, and then the camera just pans up to Magog and be like, Don't worry. He's in black heaven. <laughs> like, and she's like, you're so fucking racist. <laughs> like, you I know? always love that scene from, uh, is it Deep Blue Sea? Where, um, oh, Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson. Yeah, Samuel Jackson's giving that big the heart. Survivor speech. Speech. Yeah, the survivor speech. Yeah, the survivor And then all of a sudden the shark just is like, chomp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you surprise people. And that's what I loved about like the Evil Dead movies. It was juxtaposition comedy. People went into those movies thinking we're going to see this scary zombie movie that happens up in the woods. And they ended up getting like laughing their ass off because Bruce Campbell was such uh, a funny, uh, dark 
character, you know? Yeah. Especially Army of Darkness when he goes to grab the Necronomicon and yeah. he forgot the words. He forgot the the words, you know? <laughs> you know? Narada, Nictu, Inferno. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he picks it up. I've seen that. I, I and felt that's like his uh, sitcom was actually pretty good, too. What, the Evil Dead show? Yeah, the show that he had. It wasn't oh, bad. Ash, it was Ash great. versus the Evil Dead. Ash, yeah. Ash versus the Evil Dead. Yeah, I loved it, but it didn't yeah. get enough ratings for them to continue, so it only has, what, three seasons? Two seasons? Yeah. Something like Teases that? Oh, of, no, oh, no. It got, completely, it, it got completely fucked over by the showrunner, and so it got canceled. Oh, I didn't... I, I figured it was for ratings. I mean, it was kind of a niche, you know... Dude, it was it was on stars. They would have run it for another five seasons if if there hadn't been interference. But yeah. they changed everything uh, to end up the final season, which ended well. It ended up to be the final season. Uh, be, and and Bruce Campbell was like, "I'm fucking out, guys. You 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 guys are dicking around with this too much." Yeah. And so without Bruce Campbell, you know, there really is no Ash. Right, of course, and I get that. You know, at least we got some, we got some of it. A couple good seasons, um, and it was fun. Um, Adian Bronze Gauntlet says Tucker and Dale is a great movie. It is, you know, and I love juxtaposition comedies because that's what really Magog is all about. You know, most of the time when you see a wizard in the first place, most of the time when you see a wizard in a movie, in a fantasy movie or a TV show, he's the kind, wise, you know that ends up helping the heroes you know he's the leader he, he's the wise man he's he's yoda he's gandalf magog oh, is goodness. not any of those magog is an asshole <laughs> <laughs> you know magog oh, would actually rather fuck you and leave you to die <laughs> and save his own hide that's kind of the point you know Kind of like an accidental Jack Sparrow. But kind of magic. Yeah, I mean, it's that it's that level of evil where he's he's an evil, but he's not a complete dick, you know, because you can't you can't cross over you can't cross over to actual villain with a character like Magog. It's very like Crypt Keeper. It's very Elvira, you know. It's very Adam's Family where they're like dark and ghoulish, and ghoulish things happen, but they're actually really. <sighs> kind nice people you know or he'll do good but completely by accident right or he'll he'll be the accidental hero you know there's many tropes yeah. and those tropes have always worked in my opinion when they're done right his heart grew three times time bigger <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah you know like and i like the smart ass you know comedy and stuff like that you know i like the the kind of edginess that Magog has and that it's some things he say almost he says it in a modern lingo and that's another juxtaposition I can't wait to kind of play around with with the show is people in this fantasy world talk like a fantasy world so, so when you watch Game of Thrones or something you never see like you never hear them you know using modern language you know it's very European hey, bro yeah, so I love this idea of being like, you know, we shall we shall gather together our weapons and slay the dragon. And then you hear Magog in the back of the crowd, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> you know? Everybody's gonna die. You know, I, I like that. I, I do. I've always found it to be really funny, you know. And 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 the fact that he kind of learns it from peering through the veil into our world. So nobody really gets the context of some of the things he says. It's almost like a Deadpool type fourth wall break yeah. where he'll say something and the audience watching understands, but the character on screen is like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you think, YOLO. Oh God, I even hate myself now. You know, it's just, I love that kind of comedy. I really do. I mean, like, 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 I think it was the first Deadpool when he said something. And, uh, like, I think it was Colossus was like, what? And he's like, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Damn it. He looks right at the camera. You know, like, that's the kind of shit that I, I, I've always kind of, like, you're yeah. inside his madness, you know? Yeah. The audience is along for the ride. 
because they're they're they live vicariously through his mad little head, you know. And so, yeah, I do plan on making this show kind of more mature and rated R kind of comedy and stuff because I, I mean, come on, if you've watched my YouTube show, you know that I'm not going to go in a family friendly direction. You guys fucking know that, right? <laughs> like you already know. Look at this bit shoot, kids. No. <laughs> Right. There's gonna be I'm gonna have to create a website to have the uncensored episodes on, you know, <laughs> that people can pay for so I can make some money off of this thing. You know, like I just you know, I, I want to do little improv jokes like that too, and little like nods to some of the things I love. Like I do love Game of Thrones. I know it's not for everybody and not a lot of people. I know quite a few people who've never even seen a single episode, but I loved Game of Thrones and yeah, uh I do. You know, and I'd love to do a joke where Magog's running his magic shop and this topless white haired woman comes in with CGI dragons crawling all over her. And he's like, why are you naked? And she's like, I am the dragon queen. That doesn't answer my question. <laughs> you know, like, look, that's not, that still doesn't explain why you're naked covered in dragons. You know, like, I love how. There's other ratings. Just yeah. go with it. And then, then Magog just turns to the camera, but the ratings are nice. <laughs> Nothing. You know? You know? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Ethan Long says the hobbits hire Magog instead of Gandalf to do the fireworks, and he sets the Shire ablaze. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things like that. Like, I want to do little parody things like that where, like, I'd love to hire, like, an actual little person like actor to come in and be like, sir, I, I must take this ring to Mount Undoomed and throw it in the fire from whence it was created to destroy it. Can you, wise wizard, show me the way? Yeah, sure. Ten minutes later. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, he's dead. Oh, he's fucked. It's a nice ring, though. <laughs> you know? Like, I think I'll just keep it, you know? <laughs> it just cuts to a black screen that says 10 minutes later. <laughs> and then it cuts back and the hobbit's dead on the ground. His head's chopped off, you know? I want to be able to do some funny shit like that, you know? Pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, he's dead. Oh. <laughs> Oops. You know, I love those like oopsie types of things, you know, um, and Magog meeting other like zany characters too. like, I don't want Magog to be j the only one, you know, I kind of like the idea of like Beard Barry and kind of being connected to that comedy with all the serious stuff going on. And I want to be able to parody more than just like medieval themed stuff like books and movies. I want to parody a lot of things. I'd love to do an episode where Magog and Beardy are hired to solve a crime and the whole episode ends up becoming like a parody of CSI. Oh, I remember you talking about that before. You know? uh, that'll be pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, and it, you, you could have like, I, I guess some medieval looking sunglasses because they, you know, they're not modern, but they have like colored glass and they have like wired frames that look like they were forged out of just like regular like metal, you know, like some Ben Franklin's, you know, some some old ass like sunglasses, and have Magog say, "Well, somebody really lost their head." Ow! And he puts the sunglasses on, you know. It's like, <laughs> and he just stands there, and then it just backs out, and the guards are there, and Beardy, and they're all looking at him, and the the mute they can't hear the music because the music's in Magog's head, and they're just looking at him. And then they go, what "The fuck are you doing?" Like I don't. Or Poe just stays at the, just before the end credits. I fucking hate you. And I love the idea of it being like by the end of the episode, they don't solve the murder because they get wound up in some other some other thing. And at yeah. the end of it, they're like, when are we supposed to do something today? You know, like... <laughs> and the dead body is still like... Uh, and then they see the like the fucking mortician wheeling the dead body in on a wooden cart to pro you know to to bind up the body for burial and he and he and, he, and the guy's got blood on his apron and he's like tying the guy's feet together and they're like digging the grave in the graveyard and all of a sudden poe appears on the headstone of the murder victim and they all look and they go oh oh it's you poe because they're by that episode they'd be used to seeing him around the village since magog arrived and they're like oh it's you poe and i like the idea of Side note, I like the idea of Poe becoming friends with the gravediggers of the village. But anyway, there's going to be some funny things there. 
And they're like, what are you doing here? And Poe's just like, I wanted to make sure you guys know. Spread the word. Look what happens to motherfuckers who don't pay what they owe. <laughs> you know, like, no, like the that. whole time Poe was the killer. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> also, even though he's the killer, he could also be the uh, the uh, moral compass of the story. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You know, there's just so much that I, I want to do, but once again, we go back to the original topic of this stream. I can't do any of this great comedy that I've written because I'm stuck behind a single set in a in an apartment. I got no fellow actors. I got no sets. I got I don't even have a good green a full size green screen to film in front of standing up. You know, my only green screen is that little green cloth stretched over cardboard for the for the window. You know, the yeah. the stone window in the background of my videos. That's all I got. I got no room here, you know. It's 570 square foot. In the short term, um, I'll be going over to uh, Salem, Massachusetts at the end of next month. I saw you tweet that out. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I've got a slight idea of something for a sort of collab. Because it's in Salem, there is a lot of witchcraft and magic shops there oh yeah you're going to salem yeah, yeah. that they've made a business off of people visiting just for yeah. that you i mean they even have like bars and pubs named like the witch's brew and shit like that you know <laughs> like yeah. i didn't see any pubs there last time based on that but there was one really cool one called the bit bar which was just full-on geek and nerd stuff where it's full of arcades and you can get a beer and something to eat as well. That's cool. There. Why are you going to Salem? Uh, visiting a friend. Oh, right on. Uh, oh, yeah. She's the uh, girl that uh, does Sin's voice on uh, some of my videos. Oh, okay. Cool. I've known her for a few years now. So you're coming all the way to America, to Salem, Massachusetts, to get laid. Cool. Nice. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can think of no better reason to travel. <laughs> you know what? That's the reason I went to England. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I joined the military and they were like, you're stationed at RAF Mildenhall. And I was like, oh, I'm getting laid by an English broad. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I want oh. that accent wrapped around my cock. That's what I want. It's yeah, so the, for you. Yeah, uh, going forward with your, your skits and such, I know you said you couldn't barely see out of your contacts. What are you going to do to circumvent that in the future when you're actually having to navigate uh, like around your apartment? other than, you know, running a drill so you know where your mark is and all that shit. Running a drill so I know where my mark is. There's nothing else you can do. They don't make contact lenses mm -hmm. like that that you can see out of. They, they're all mesh. Ah, okay. There's no way to have the pale white eyes. And let's face it, I can't change that about Magog. I really can't. I've, mm -hmm. I've looked at other contact lenses that are like evil eye colors, like red and like bright green and like magic looking. And I'm like, but with the makeup and everything, like I can't change Magog now. I have established that he has pale dead eyes. I can't, I can't change that about Magog. It's just not going to be Magog. Yeah. If I, you know, I even wrote it into the lore that necromancers all are like that. That's why Lythea of Morskar has fucking white eyes, you know? Uh -huh. I just Nick, didn't know they had a, a one you could see out of that we would keep within the lore confines. But well, the biggest uh, the biggest problem is I can see out of them actually pretty well. Um, the reason I can't see out of them well behind my set is because the lights. Ah, once okay. they're in and the lights are shining in my fucking face, it gets a little harder. But if it's a nice, like. I, that's why I like the idea of having a studio building so I can actually like suspend the lights from the ceiling and not have them up on tripods blowing right in my face. You know, <laughs> I actually I would get to see a lot better if I could get nice natural lighting instead of just blasting some photo lights into my face. But I don't have a lot of options in, the, in this apartment. I have to have these photograph lights because the regular lighting in this apartment, you know, is just a ceiling fan with a light bulb and a lamp in the corner. I mean, I can't do much with that. But if I had a nice big studio where I can have lots of different candles lit, I can have some off-screen lighting that's dimmer. I can get a, a a much better atmospheric lighting with a with a much bigger space. So, nah, yeah, that makes sense. I, yeah, and I would be able to see a lot better because, like. 
that white film over your eyes can be a bit difficult. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. They're still covering my pupils. They're, I'm, I'm at like 60% visibility, honestly. Like, it's not as bad as people think it is, but it's also still pretty blind, you know. Uh, Dean Broad's Gauntlet says, Magog in Friends parody. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to start each episode off with like a medieval. I can't wait to like get music musically inclined people involved too. Cause like, I'd love to find some band that can do like medieval tunes and have them <laughs> medieval parody versions of popular like show tunes to like, so when I do the episode parodying friends, it'll have like the friends theme, but played on the loot. And the episode will right. be called the yeah. one where something happens with something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, uh, I, I'd love to do that where it's just like, I'll be there for you, but it's sung in Elvish, you know, like, <laughs> you know, and just, you know, I, I want to do stuff like that, you know. The one, I, the, the one where Magog kicks the mayor up the ass. Yeah. I've always wanted. I've always wanted to do a porno. I would call it something. <laughs> we get this way comes. <laughs> uh, Captain Jack Brackle of Gulf City says, "Here's something odd. There is a cat hovering in the men's bathroom where I work. He seems perfectly happy and healthy, but it's floating about four feet off the ground next to the sink." Okay, you need a huh. you need a psychologist, buddy. Um, that might be a I want to get that looked into. Yeah, that might be a cat's ghost or something. You might be a crazy person, too. That might be schizophrenic. <laughs> um, but look at the bright side. You may be schizophrenic, but at least you have each other. <laughs> You're never <laughs> alone now. <laughs> if he's in Gulf City, then it may be <laughs> um, part of the fright supremacy. Right. Fright, fright supremacy. Ah, I can't even say it, Cat. Bright supremacy. Bright supremacy. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Bright supremacy cat. But I, I guess like where I'm at in life right now is I feel like I have bigger dreams than I have the ability to make them come true. And I feel like I've let down the fans a little bit because I've sold them on these really wonderful ideas, but then I can't deliver them because I, I don't have money. I don't even have a bigger place yet. I mean, it's... Maybe I should have just kept my fucking mouth shut because now I feel like I'm failing my fan. Well, I, know, I know you feel that way, but has anyone actually complained yet? No, it's it's I'm oh. I'm my I'm my own worst critic. Yeah. I think I think <laughs> people would have been more vocal if they were really disappointed in you. So everyone's hundred percent behind you, so don't worry about that. Yeah, it, I think fans actually see that you're making the effort. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like you're doing an Anita Sarkeesian and just saying, yeah, I'll throw in a few videos out now and go fuck yourselves. Trust me, it, it pisses me off that the type of content I do and the plans that I have would actually be, like, super cool that I think, like, a lot of the world would love to watch. And I can't, I can't raise any kinds of funds. That bitch gets on one YouTube video and goes, I'm making this six-video series, and she raises, like, 200 grand. And doesn't even manage six videos, and she and it took her fucking three years to do six videos. Yeah. Like fuck you, lady. <laughs> like, how is it that assholes can get like the funding and the attention and the following, and guys that because actually they work hard and put everything they have their entire life on hold so they can pour themselves into their creation get fucking nothing man it just and i'm not just talking about me there are so many other content creators out there that are brilliant i love what they do and they're going nowhere and they can't grow even when i throw them a shout out on my streams or i do collabs with them they don't grow it's like it's really sad the world the world right now that we live in some somehow these tech companies have created an internet that rewards mediocrity instead of excellence Unfortunately, yeah. It's it's the internet of participation. That's it. It's the petition pa participation trophy mentality, but on the internet, yeah. Right. You know? It's like Doc, man. Like, I never even heard of Doc until he 
somebody, one of my fans was fans of his and got us linked together and he invited me on for an interview and we did doctor on call. And even though I'd never heard of this guy and he doesn't have a lot of subs, it was probably the single best inner like one-on-one -on -one interview I've ever done. Oh, shut <laughs> And then he starts this like insomnia stream for people like me who are up late at night and stuff. And uh, that show sucks. Oh, it so does. Bad. <laughs> Dude, we were talking about filling the Cadutinator 3000 with bull semen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm joking. I'm joking. But. Um, Captain Jack Brackle of Gulf City says, just to let you know, I live in friendly desert community where the sun is hot, the moon is beautiful, and mysterious lights pass overhead while we pretend to sleep. Night Vale. Yeah, I still I still have no idea what this guy's talking about, to be honest with you. Like I've seen I've seen his super chats. I appreciate his support. But I really honestly, like it's some like Andy Kaufman level <laughs> of like, you know, like character. Like, he never breaks it, and I still don't understand what he's talking about. I don't understand it. Like, I know he's speaking he's English. Right. I know he's speaking English. It's just an English I don't understand. <laughs> it's some next-level character acting, man. <laughs> now, about the channel growths, I think it's all about the networking. Some of it is, but a lot of people aren't working with each other anymore. Notice, I, you know, you, you don't know you, you don't see as many collabs as you used to because streaming has just taken over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2016, every, like, yeah, between 2014, 2016, this whole community were fucking booming, and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll try that as well. And then it just all seemed to die after that, like, after the uh, first apocalypse. Yeah, and that was the year I joined. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel finally. I'm going to do what my friends dared me to do, and we'll see how it works. And I started putting out videos, and people were starting to pay attention. And then all of a sudden, it all just crashed and burned. And every YouTuber just started to panic, and they stopped working together. They stopped supporting each other, you know. That is kind of a, like a sad thing, too. Right. Um, Berserk Shirt Bear says, Night Vale is a podcast where a small, where, where is a small fucked up town where supernatural shit happens, all reported via the local radio station. Yeah. That's kind of cool, actually. That's yeah, really I like cool. the idea of that. Yeah. yeah, I like the idea. You'll have to link me that. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, um, uh, welcome to Night Vale. Uh, was one of the scheduled guests for DashCon, and they didn't get paid, so they walked. But DashCon officials still said, well, we need to raise this amount of money or we can't get them to come on, when, in fact, they were already planning their trip to get the fuck out of there. Wow. Um, that kind of sucks. Were they promised money and then not paid? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's low. Yeah, there was a there was a steampunk band there, uh, uh, too. Uh, I forget who they are, but they were they're big in the steampunk community, and um, they uh, they were told that uh, their rooms were reserved, but they would need a credit card to do it. So they paid for their own rooms, and they were supposed to be reimbursed by DashCon, and they threatened not to go on. But because they had so many fans there and they'd already taken time out of their schedule, they went ahead and performed anyway and they got fucked over. That's good. Yeah. I just had a flash in my head of this idea of like Magog stepping out of a magic portal, the hot desert uh, wind hits him in the face at, and it's nighttime and this strange little town has creepy crawly shadows skittering across the streets. There's dead bodies and there's people gathered cowering in the church hoping that the night dark things don't get them next 
and there's a big sign when Magog walks down the street that says, Welcome to Night Vale. And Magog takes one look around, sees all the darkness and death and supernatural shit going on, and the camera just zooms in real close to his face. He looks dead at the camera and goes, I'm going to fuck this place up. <laughs> 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 this is a good place to start. <laughs> right, it's uh, past five AM for me, so I'm going to get going. Yeah, uh, it's time but, to bring it into the yeah, show. Um, when I go to Salem, and uh, if I film some footage going around some of the magic shops, would it be something Magog would be interested in looking at? Sure, send mm. it to me. Yeah, if, I, if it's I, any I, good footage, anyway. Yeah, if it's if it's any good and I can make some jokes out of it, I'll do something with it. But yeah, you know, I make I make no promises. I'd have to look at the yeah. I'd have to look at the actual product. But yes, yeah, same same because uh, I went to Scotland uh, last uh, autumn and said to Beardy, uh, if you want some footage of some big rolling planes, uh, would you be interested? He said, yeah, yeah. And then I got there, and every time I would find somewhere decent to film, there would be a road going through. Or some pylons going through like for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. so, nothing was usable at all. Yeah. I, I you know, like I just uh I'm gonna need to start thinking of doing stuff like that too for like little Magog comedy skits. Like I'd love to have this beautiful elven woman with flowing, you know, a flowing dress flapping in the wind, and she's singing this beautiful medieval song while she's walking up onto the cliffs of Dover, you know, looking out on the ocean and she's singing this beautiful song and it's got this beautiful music playing. It's very sound of music. Her arms are out. She's singing about her long lost love at sea. And then all of a sudden she gets pushed off the cliff by Magog. <laughs> <laughs> she goes flying down and scream. And then, did everybody see that? The bitch who woke me up just jumped. Just yeah. suicidal whore. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, uh, interrupting somebody's nap. You know? <laughs> and on hot bombshell, good night. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming on. Mr. Yeah. Kerr, everybody. Um, and that's also where I'm going to end it. We've been going for two hours. Uh, I'm not tired, but I don't like to do streams longer than two hours uh, on my channel specifically because uh, that's just my. My cutoff point, but if anybody else is streaming and wants me to come on, I'm I'm up for at least another two hours. Um, you know, I do have to get up at a decent time to go meet um, to meet the realtor at that one place. But uh, you know, I just wanted to talk. I don't know, just having some good times. Thank you, everybody who donated, and thank you to all my guests who came on. Um, Doc, Doc, Stalvin, do you want to show some shit before we leave? Uh, sure, why not? I'll let Doc go first. No, okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go prep. We're going to do IRS tonight. The only thing I'm going to be talking about, and then, you know, it goes any place that it wants to. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, visiting the best uh, Air Force Museum in the world. Fun. And, and I took somebody from Norway there today. <laughs> Good times. Uh, well, you can, uh, you both have wrenches, I'm pretty sure. So you can put your channels in the uh, chat there. Yeah. Oh, uh, I I should mention it's a two a.m. or we're gonna be starting it at at two. We're gonna try to keep two as like the regular um, time to start. But I'll take I'll take as much kadunt as I can get. So sometimes we two, what Eastern Central Pacific uh, two a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The only time that counts. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh uh, shit! You got a fat super chat. Yep, right at the end there, Captain Jack Brackle, Gulf City, drops a, a good a good little amount in the chat. So thank you so much. Night Vale is a town where every conspiracy theory is true, but still I got to go. Steve Carlsberg is back home, and I want to stand behind him in the mirror when he bends down to wash his face. His shrieks are the funniest. Well, you have fun with that, sir. And um, since you have a wrench, I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I'd ask you to... Um, Leave a link to your podcast. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, go ahead, Stalvin. Do you got uh, anything to say? Sure. Uh, 
a new job coming up, so we won't be streaming. Uh, but I will be dropping new videos on small projects until I get some bigger ones done. Uh, they'll be sporadic, no set time. Just uh, hopefully you'll see the notifications. Here's a link to it. Yay. Right on. Well, uh, everybody check out the chat. Look for links to all of uh, the people who leave them. Thank you again for watching. We're going to do more of these kind of just uh, talking streams because I like to talk about the projects, keep them fresh in people's minds, keep them fresh in my mind. And uh, and and be able to update you guys on the progress of getting a new, uh, getting new property and uh, new sets and you know as we go along, I got to start doing these because uh, I I feel like my fans do like to hear from me, so um, we'll see you next time. I feel like doing one of these. Uh, it's there's no set time at the moment, but uh, just keep an eye out. Thanks everybody for coming by, and uh, we'll catch you next time.